Uh, I'm Will Sellers. I'm chief pilot and expedition leader for Jason here at uh, Woods Hole Oceanographic. Uh, the main focus of this cruise was uh, geology and biology in the southern ring of fire south of Japan. Funded by NOAA and Bob Embley was the uh, chief scientist. We visited uh, some six or eight sites during that trip. And this site, which was a, might have been the third one we went to, we were only scheduled to be there for a day. But it started erupting so violently uh, that they'd never seen anything like this before. We wound up spending three days there. And uh, we wound up going back as well for another day. Well, when we went to the uh, brimstone pit, uh, it wasn't really erupting very much when we got there. Just a, a lot of gas bubbles coming up out of the bottom. And uh, very soon after we arrived, the, it did erupt and uh, we got chased away initially by this enormous cloud coming out of it. The lava bombs, as big as your head, uh, that was impressive. We came up uh, with several of them in the frame of the vehicle where they landed. Fortunately, they'd cooled enough by the time they got uh, as far as us. Uh, there, there were some very uh, scary moments there. There was still a significant amount of gas coming up uh, out, of the, out of the pit. And it was, you can only imagine at the surface, uh, when it wasn't under that kind of pressure, it would, it would have been huge. You wouldn't have been able to stand anywhere near it. Well, common reaction was, are you sure we should be here? Uh, because uh, at any moment, it, you felt like it could go Mount St. Helens on you. That uh, it, it, it's sitting there violently erupting away and really get the impression that this is so unpredictable that this could uh, go off uh, on a, a huge scale at any moment. We took rocks from around the brimstone pit. Um, we weren't able to uh, sample from directly in the pit, but all around the side of the, the cone as it was being built were little vents coming out of the side. We sampled uh, fluid samples from there. Um, you had to be careful where you sat down because uh, the bottom could be extremely hot. But we got uh, within 10 feet of it to take some really good footage. You could see the glow of the lava inside the pit. Whoa, look at that. What is it? Whoa! Holy moly! Wow. We'd come across a lake of sulfur. Look at that red. Uh, probably 30 by 15 feet. And the sulfur was on the bottom oh boiling God. away. Uh, so we sampled some of that. We went to another spot and we saw a, a hole and the sulfur's boiling away in it, and we sat down to get a temperature of that. We stick the temperature probe in, it was 187 degrees uh, C, which would be about 220 something Fahrenheit. And little did we know that at the time, when we sat down uh, next to that hole, we were sitting on this wafer thin crust that had uh, cooled and formed on the top of another boiling sulfur lake. And at one point, Really, just as we were lifting off, the vehicle broke through that crust, and uh, we just dipped uh, uh, our the Jason's uh, lower skid into it. Uh, the end result was uh, they called me up to the control van because the vehicle gained 80 pounds, and we were struggling to fly around because the vehicle had picked up so much weight. We did a few spins each way, trying to wash it off, kind of wishful thinking, but. Uh, it was like the Hail Mary maneuver, but uh, it didn't work, so we recovered. We wound up recovering the vehicle, and the smell almost knocked everybody over on deck. It was, uh, it was quite a moment. There, the sulfur all inundated around the frame. As you can imagine, it got into every nook and cranny in the tool sled, and we have to get it all off because that's our payload we're talking about. You know, if you leave 25 pounds of it stuck on there somewhere, that's 25 pounds of rock. Science doesn't get to pick up on that dive. 
It was 19 days of ops, and we got 220 hours of autumn time. Very successful trip, but uh, there's no manual for this, so we kind of made it up as we went along. This podcast is a production of Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution. For more information, visit us on the web at www.whoi.edu.